you are part of the exciting web of life called biodiversity that includes the environment, people, and animals. But it is shrinking fast, putting the future of our planet at risk. You can help stop this. Small actions collectively can add up to a big impact, but you need to act today. Download our Biodiversity Is Us app or visit your local zoo or aquarium and discover what you can do to help. What change will you make? Welcome to the last session of uh, Biodiversity and Conservation. Now in the last part we are looking at the conservation part and in the conservation part we have various definitions like uh, sacred groups, uh, sacred species and uh, finally the ex situ conservation and how the biodiversity has to be conserved. So let's uh, finish it off in this class. Now here we have a heading called as a sacred groups. Now we have a definition for the sacred groves. Sacred groves is nothing but a traditionally protected patches of a forest land. So it is a traditionally protected patches of forest land. This is what is called as a sacred groves. Sacred refers to holy or worshipped. These are the areas which are present in the forest that are worshipped. Why do we worship? By placing a god or by construction of a temple. That's why we do not cut down the plants and uh, the forest trees which are present uh, beside the uh, these temples. So as a result, if the sacred groves are present in an area uh, with a holistic approach, we can easily save our biodiversity. So that's why sacred groves are those which are traditionally protected and worshipped parts of the land. Okay, or we call them as a forest land. We have an example for this. The first example is Kashi and Jayantia hills in Meghalaya. Okay, now here we have certain forest lands, Kashi and Jayantia hills in Meghalaya. Then we have other example uh, for the sacred cruise where we call it as Aravali hills of Rajasthan. Hills of Rajasthan. Okay, second example and uh, if we look at the third example, third example is regarding Western Ghat regions. Western Ghat regions of Karnataka, Maharashtra and the Sarguja. Okay, so Western Ghat regions of Karnataka, Maharashtra and Sarguja and lastly Chanda and Bastar areas of MP. Chanda and Bastar areas of Madhya Pradesh. Okay, now almost we call these areas as a sacred groves. Sacred means they are traditionally protected, traditionally conserved species which are present in that forest area. So first one is a Kashi and Jayantya hills located in Meghalaya. It is a uh, worshipped, it is protected. Then Aravadi hills of Rajasthan, again same, it is called a sacred group. Western Ghat regions of Karnataka, Maharashtra and Sarguja. If you move towards the Western Ghat, there we find little bit temples also. Some areas are referred to as it is ruled by the God. By this concept, we are conserving the forest land so that the human activity can be stopped there. 
then Chand Chandra and Bastar areas of uh, Madhya Pradesh in the MP. So almost uh, these are uh, traditionally protected areas of a uh, forest land where we call them as a uh, sacred groves. Then after sacred groves, we have one more uh, heading called as a sacred species. So this, this is an second example, additional example, which is not there for your NCRT. So sacred species definition is same only traditionally protected species. They are traditionally protected species. They are traditionally worshipped species. We call them as a sacred species. They are traditionally protected species. They might be of a plants or animals. They are traditionally protected and worshipped. If you take an example, here we can take an example of a cow. We can take an example of cobra. We can take an example of Ocean plants. Cow worshipped. Okay. So in Canada we call it as a Gomate. It is a worshipped cobra. Nagadevate. Ocean. Tulsi. Tulsi Gida. In Madara. Tulsi Pujanu Madaru. Tulsi Lagnanu Madaru. Now here we are. What uh, protecting these species. So all these becomes an example for sacred species. Traditionally protected. Traditionally worshipped. Why do we use this concept because to preserve these species what will happen if the species is not preserved they will one or the other day they will become extinct this is why many people won't kill the cobras okay so that they think that uh, it keeps animity and it may attack the humans it's not like that but the thing is the intention is protect the species that's why we call them as a sacred species so traditionally protected species they are sacred species and these sacred species are protected and the species has to be conserved. Okay, so this is regarding the part of a sacred groves and sacred species. This is an additional concept which is there, uh, which is not there in your NCIT. But sacred groves and uh, the respective example is there, which can be asked for a short notes, three mark level question. So there you have to explain along with the examples. Then with this, let's move on to the last part last part is a uh, xc2 conservation in the conservation and uh, protection of the biodiversity we have xc2 conservation in the previous session we had came to the part of in c2 conservation in c2 conservation is a uh, uh, in on site that means uh, conservation protection of the species uh, in their natural habitat xc2 is a uh, off site that means uh, uh, conservation and preservation of the species outside their natural habitat that's why xc2 refers to off site off site conservation so here protection of a species outside there Natural habitat. Outside their natural habitat. That means if they are present in the forest, what we do? We just take them and we keep somewhere else and give protection for them. Then let's look at the example for this. The example for the ex situ conservation. First one is zoological parks. Then second one is a botanical gardens. And a wildlife safari parks. There is one more method called as a cryo preservation. Where the gametes of the species can be preserved now look at this xc2 conservation is nothing but uh, it is a off-site conservation that means uh, we are taking these species from their natural habitat uh, into the artificial medium where we are giving protection now for example zoological park if you take the zoological park we have the best zoo 
in Karnataka called as a Sri Chamarajandra Wadiyar Zoological Garden, Mysore. Commonly called as Mysore Zoo. Then botanical gardens are also there. Okay, so like Indian Botanical Garden, which already was studied in the chapter 1 of first PUC. Botan botanical gardens are there. Now, zoological park, animals are kept in captivity. Botanical gardens, then the plants species are preserved. Live species, we are talking about live species, not the photography of this. Then, wildlife safari park. Okay, like we have the Bangalore Banergata wildlife safari. So, where you can roam into the forest and you can see the animals which are kept in captivity. This is what is called as a wildlife safari parks. In the safari parks, you can roam and see the species. In the zoos, already they are kept in the captivity. You can observe them. You can study them. So, this is regarding the part of the ex situ conservation outside their natural habitat. Apart from this, we have cryopreservation also. Cryopreservation is nothing but storing in liquid nitrogen at a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. Okay, at about minus 196 degrees Celsius. The gametes of the animals which are endangered can be uh, kept there. And even the seeds can be stored there where we call them as a seed gene banks. So the process of cryopreservation can be also call, called as a seed banks and they are also termed as seed gene banks because we are preserving these genes we are preserving these gametes for a future use and especially they are preserved uh, of those species which are called as endangered endangered means the species which are in danger of extinction okay so we have many different species uh, in which extinct species are those which are no more in this world then critically endangered are they are at the age of extinction then endangered species are those which are whose number is very less and they are at the risk of extinction so that's why we have to preserve we have to save and conserve these species either by ex situ conservation or by in situ conservation now for this various rules various convention acts uh, like the world summit earth summit has been held to preserve conserve our biodiversity and how these uh, wildlife is conserved let's look at them in the last part we have certain summits now here we come across the first one is regarding the earth summit which is of most important the earth summit was held in rio de janeiro which is located in brazil so earth summit was held in rio de janeiro brazil in the year 1992 for conservation of biodiversity and a sustainable utilization of its benefits. This is for the conservation of our biodiversity only. So when the Earth Summit was held in the year 1992 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil for the conservation of biodiversity and a sustainable utilization of its benefits. If we conserve our biodiversity, definitely we will get a benefit out of it because a lot of things we extract from the plant source, from the wildlife. So we get it, we use it in the form of medicines, timber or in any other form. So definitely it helps us. So that's why let us preserve our biodiversity. Next one is the World Summit. The World Summit was held in Johannesburg, located in South Africa. So Earth Summit was held in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. World Summit was held in Johannesburg, located in South Africa, in the year 2002. Look at this. Exactly after how many years? 10 years. On sustainable development of our biological resources or of our biodiversity. Now, here in the World Summit, look at this. 190 countries have pledged their commitment to achieve by 2010, the loss of biodiversity should be prevented, the loss of biodiversity should be protected and the main intention is to preserve and conserve our biodiversity. So that is the main intention of this Earth Summit which was held in 1992 and the World Summit which was held in 2002. One in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, second one is Johannesburg, South Africa. So let's save the plants save the life so biodiversity is ours let's save it let's, let's pledge it and let's save it thank you with this we'll end up the chapter